Thank you. I accept. Today, we are on a road to Hollywood for a very special reason. And everybody here is so excited and so talented and, and so beautiful that I'm just going to name them in alphabetical order and with just a tiny little description. Like, for instance, the first one is a redhead, Lucille Ball. <laughs> Blonde, Rosemary Clooney. <laughs> we have another redhead, Rhonda Fleming is with us. And now we have a genuine, honest to goodness brunette, Dorothy Lamour is with us. Another genuine, honest to goodness brunette, Jane Russell, is with us. <laughs> There's a lot of honest, genuine brunettes around here. Today. <laughs> well, we won't go into that. And now, if you are a movie buff, you all know that those lovely and talented women have something very special in common. They were all the leading ladies of a funny gentleman who has written a book, The Road to Hollywood. Mr. Bob Hope. <laughs> different they are, isn't it? Aren't they nice? Yeah. Aren't they nice? That's worth I... traveling across town for. I know. <laughs> for a guy who travels a lot, you could come a lot further to see me. You know that. <laughs> are you prepared for all the candid comments that are going to be uh, raised in, in your behalf? or? I have a feeling I'm, the, I'm a walking dartboard tonight, right? <laughs> I, I have that feeling. No. Love. What am I doing here with woman's lib? What am I doing here with this? <laughs> no woman's, women's love, not women's woman. love. Yes. Yeah, well, you've got the loves here, I'll tell you okay. that. Okay, we're going to be right back on the road yeah. to Hollywood. All right. <laughs> I have to confess something to you. Uh, the book is brand new, and I have not had a chance to read it. It's quite impressive looking. So I'm just going to ask you uh, a, a lot of questions. It may sound dumb for somebody who wrote a book, The Road to Hollywood, My 40-Year Love Affair with the Movies, Bob Hope, and Bob Thomas. Nice Bob guy. Bob Thomas. Oh, oh he's yeah. so busy. It's, uh, you're lucky you can get him. You know, he did the Disney book, you yeah. know, Abbott and Costello. He's around grabbing more yeah. money. Yeah. Oh. He's a nice man. Liz Ray wrote a book. She's back on her feet again. <laughs> There's so much money. What is that? What? Is that Let's screen this audience. I think we ought to. Is that kind of group? Isn't that something? Yeah. Oh. Were you impressed These with soap Hollywood? opera audiences, huh? Annoying. <laughs> <laughs> These people live by curiosity. They when you do. See They're so beautiful good. people. Were you impressed with Hollywood when you first came out here? N not at all. Not at all. I was mad at Hollywood because I made a. Uh, 1930, I went through here on the Orpheum time. I was four years old. And. Um, <laughs> Go ahead, count, count. <laughs> and um, and uh, Al Bosberg, my writer, told uh, our, our friend, uh, Bill Pearlberg, said, uh, watch this guy, because he thinks I was fairly funny. Uh -huh. And I made a test for over at Path A. Uh -huh. Path A News. You remember the rooster on the top of the building? Sure. Wow, wow. You know what I mean? You're too young for that. Sure, yeah. That's anyway. I forgot. Of course That's I am. <laughs> yes, okay. Anyway, I made a test. And I thought, my, here they are, they've got yeah. me, you know, God's yeah. gift to Hollywood. <laughs> and I, I went to San Diego, played the orphan, came back, and I called uh, Pearlberg, and I said, uh, how about the test? He said, you want to see it? And just by that reading alone, I, I knew. 
that I'd had it, you know? Uh -huh. And I said, yeah. I said, well, go out to Path A. It'll be in one of the studios. And I went out there, and I went to the doorman and said, what's your name? I said, Bob Hope. He said, yeah, OK. Projection room four. I was all alone. I sat there. Oh. And I came on the screen, and my nose came on the screen about 20 minutes before I did. You know? <laughs> And I sat there looking at this thing, and I saw this test. Now, this was a surefire bit that I did oh, that from vaudeville that I knew was great, you know. And, and there I was, dying up there, you know. No laughs or anything, naturally. And uh, I looked at the thing, and when it finished, I said, the guy said, uh, you want to see it again? I said, no, thank you. Oh. I didn't know how to get out of the studio. I wanted to climb over the wall. I didn't want to go out the gate for fear somebody would stab me or something, you know? The terrible thing Wasted all that film. You would do wonderful routines that had been successful in Baltimore. Right. Audience, and you do them on a, on, a, on a lot like that. Right. And the crew is not allowed to laugh. If anybody on the crew laughed, no. they had to do it all over. That's right. That's right. Oh, <laughs> boy. There was something else. But now, uh, and then, then that was 1930, and about I went into a show called Roberta, and they started flirting with me. Would you come out to Hollywood and do a picture with Jack Oakey? Would you do a picture with Jack Haley? Ba, 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 ba. And I said, no, 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 I don't. No, I don't, no, I don't, no, I don't need it. Who needs it? No, who needs it? Who, who needs, needs it? Yes, that's right. Nobody laughs. Who needs you? I was pouting, you know, for about seven years until they made me the right offer, and I said, uh, say, I was in a show called Ziegfeld Follies singing Can't Get Started With You with, with a red-headed showgirl who later turned out to be Eve Arden, and they offered me big broadcast, you know? 1930. Well, that, I was going to ask you about that. Now, you 1937. Did, with W.C. Fields. W.C. Fields. And, oh, uh, what was he like to work with? He was wild, I'll tell you. It was, like, it was a little that. like playing golf with Gleason, you know? <laughs> <laughs> who can remove the small, uh, you know, alligator off your shirt just by breathing on you. <laughs> He was wild, Fields. Yeah. He was really something else. And uh, he, you talk about ad libbing. They used to let the camera roll after a scene just for his ad libs, you know? Oh. And the first time I saw him do it, you know, he said, Look at that jump. We were on a boat and we're going across the Atlantic and there was an emergency thing. All right, he said, Everybody's jumping out of the boat, the women and the children. And the men are jumping too. And they're going to look at the little babies. They're throwing the little babies out. <laughs> look at them. Bow, bow, bow. And he kept talking, finally looked in the camera and says, They'll run out of film soon. <laughs> but he was something. Yeah, it, funny, they didn't have that terrible consciousness about budgets. I mean, people could ad lib and they'd keep letting the film roll. They wouldn't let you do that. But they now. were hoping, you know, to get something Some, out of him that was extra, you know? Some jewel. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. got a theme song from that movie. That was a big Yeah, game. I sang a thing called Thanks. Uh, that, that's the first thing I heard when I went to the studio. I got off at Pasadena and I was a little on the muscle because I said, I really don't need this town. You know, I've been in five shows on Broadway, and I got mine. Yeah. I had about $80 saved up. And I said, <laughs> I don't really need this town. Yeah. And I went over to Paramount, and Billy Selwyn said, you want to hear the song you're going to sing? And I said, yeah. And he took me in the music room, and I heard, thanks for the memory. Yeah. And I said, yeah, that's all right. I took it home to Dolores, who was, she was at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. I played it for her. She said, that don't sound like much to me. <laughs> <laughs> true, you're true. And I that song kept me in pictures. Oh, you know? What? What do you mean? Well, uh, I, I sang it with Shirley Ross, yeah. and uh, Damon Runyon came out. I was all right in the picture, you know, I just did a, a job, a pedestrian job of a leading man and a couple of little scenes with Ben Blue and Martha, you know, Martha yeah. Ray. But uh, they, they weren't going to keep me on, and Damon Runyon came out with a whole column and said, our boy did it. Oh. One of the greatest presentations of a song, thanks for the memory. And that thing, that song kept me in Hollywood. Isn't and yeah. da, yeah, that lovely when you got friends like that? Damon Runyon and Mark Hellinger used to write these. Remember the Yeah, sure. sure. It, it, you, you did a, 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 a double take when you met your idol, Charlie Chaplin. Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell, me, tell them about that. That's really something. Well, uh, you know, I started in show business actually impersonating Chaplin. And I Did used to you? walk by the firehouse in Cleveland, you know, with a little mustache and doing the whole bit, you know. And I loved them naturally, like everybody else. And I came out here in 1937. And 1939, I did a picture called Cat and the Canary with Paulette Goddard, who was married to Chaplin, you know. And well, I, I, were they, I, I thought they were just engaged a long time. Well, they were I don't married. think we ought to bring it up here. I okay. think they were... <laughs> I don't think we ought to decide I here. I just think that... That's a series. I just want to tell you. No, no, I'm pretty sure they were married. Okay. I'm, I, 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 because I'm from Burbank. 
murder of Parcheesi is a felony. Now, let me tell you. <laughs> What would you think of Fart Cheesy? <laughs> It'll take you back a little. Oh, anyway, let me tell you. You ready? Okay, I'm ready. Anyway, I'll play I did a picture called uh, uh, Cat in the Canary. And uh, uh, I was out of Santa Anita. Dolores and I were out there. And we walked into the, uh, what, are the what do they call the room? You know, upstairs. And uh, where the celebrities all hang out, you know. The green room? Mervyn Leroy was waiting there then. And... Um, <laughs> Walked in there, and here's Charlie Chaplin and uh, Paula, you know? Uh -huh. And I just played it real cool. And he said, how are you? And I said, fine, nice to see you. And he said, you know, I run the rushes every night, you know? And so on, so on, so on, so on. Can you imagine me? Now I'm working with his bride. Oh. You know? And, uh, God, I, what a kick I got out of that. Oh, I, I sure. played it real cool. And then I met him a couple of times after that. But you never but, uh, could be cool around somebody like that because, I mean, you always thought he was really appraising a oh little God, bit. I, he was I, in 1927, I watched outside the, 19, uh, outside the 44th Street Theater on, on, uh, uh, in New York. I stayed outside for two hours in a doorway just to watch him walk out and get in his car. <laughs> you know, and so when he went cool. by, I went. <laughs> I love it. Love it. I was looking through the book, and I, you've made a lot of movies. You really have. A few. You never got an Oscar, though. Does that really bug you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got it for acting. I'm I mean, going to have, mean, next year, I'm going to have Mickey Rooney bronzed and forget the whole thing. <laughs> Velvet sky. Oh, it's so beautiful. We just, I, I'm, I'm going to bring one of your leading ladies out with you. And she recalls the first time she worked with you uh, that you were a little nervous about the script. Does that sound familiar? Mm -mm. Doesn't? No. Well, we can get the story from her. Here's Lucy. Thank you very much. Isn't that lovely? Yes. Doesn't that kind of make it, huh? Isn't that worth it? Can we go through? now before we do something wrong? Yeah. <laughs> you, you were worried about the script on the first film you did with Bob? Pardon? Here we go again. We do have these problems, don't we? I do ask funny questions of you. You remember the last time you were on the show, you complained about my questions? <laughs> no, I don't remember. You don't remember? <laughs> Well, what was it? What, really, what'd you ask me? I'm sorry. I, I said that I, in the opening, just before I brought you out, it, it isn't important, but I said that It you isn't could... important, then why go into it? <laughs> I have my problems with everything. No, Lucy. What was the first film you... <laughs> yes, Dinah. What was the first film you and Bob ever did together? You and Bob Hope here. Sorrowful Jones, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Right. <laughs> Well, so. I'm glad we both remembered so well. Yeah. yeah. What, do you remember, Sorrowful Jones? Mo, what do you remember most about Sorrowful Jones? Well, I was in awe, first of all. And I had taken the part because it was serious. And uh, I was assured that uh, Mr. Hope thought it was a serious piece. Too. It was a remake of Little Miss Marker, which was one of the great, great pictures. And I was very anxious to work with Bob and terrified. But it was a serious piece, and it was, you know, when they told me about it, they said Mr. Hope was going to do the remake just the way it was mm -hmm. and all that. And then we got on the set, 
and he, 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 he was having a lot of conferences with his writers. And uh, I wasn't any part of them. I was in my dressing room and whatnot. And they came in with some changes. And I said, uh, <laughs> does Mr. Hope know about these? And they said, well, naturally, or you wouldn't be getting them. And I said, well, um, uh, th these are jokes in a very important scene. And uh, Bob doesn't even know what I'm talking about, probably. <laughs> anyway, um, true, Bob, don't you hit me. Um, I said, but I, I don't want, I, I don't want to do the scene with jokes. It's, it's a very important, serious scene. And I said, well, now it's not that important if Mr. Hope, I said, no. Oh, no. I said, well, then you go tell him. I said, all right. I mean, little did I know. Yeah. I was walking into the lion's den. I had no idea. And they just, they couldn't believe it. I said, well, all right. I'll go in and talk to him. And I rap, rap, rap. Mr. Hope, may I come in? He said, yes. I went in and I told him. And he sat there and he looked just like that. <laughs> At me. I said, come in and lie down. No, you <laughs> No, she looked tired. <laughs> it's misunderstanding yes, you, don't they, you yes. poor darling? You and I. Yes, of course. <laughs> Go ahead, Lucy. That's it. That's All I it. want to tell you is about that little story is that I wish we could make a few more sorrowful Joneses. Yeah, yeah. but you did you know. come around our way. Yes, baby, but it, uh, it was all the things that we put in. It's like Bing, you know. You know how the road picture started? We had a thing, they had a I thing called born then. Flight to <laughs> You, you mean the second to... time. <laughs> It's gonna be one You know, time. you know that Bing and I used to get together that every guy morning. That's not his first leading lady. There was some beautiful thing called Hartman and Butler, two guys that wrote this picture called Flight to Singapore, you know? Uh -huh. And uh, Bing and I used to get these scripts, and my guys, I was on radio at that time, and I used to hand them the script. They'd come in with these jokes, and I'd get Bing in my room and say, hey, what about this? What about this? So and so. We'd go on the set and wacko. You know, and it actually made the road series because we did nutty. That's what I didn't want. Nutty wacko. Stuff. Wacko. Yes. Yeah. I didn't want didn't wacko want in that scene. And, and I had the guts that's before because you that's were, out of it. Honey, that's before you were directing them. That's true. <laughs> that's why it was so amazing that I, that's why they said, my God, she's out of her mind. You know, but let her go. She'll find well, out. But he came out and he said, mm, well, okay, we'll try it that way, you know. So. What about Fancy Pants? You worked with the different on that? I almost killed him. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't mean to. No. But we really put him through the ringer. We had a great director that both of us adored, George Marshall. Yeah. God bless him. Yeah. And, um... On he, what, Powerful Jones? No, on, um... This is oh, on Fancy Pants. Oh, Fancy Pants. yeah, it was great. Okay. And, uh, Bob had a lot of physical things to do. And he really he did them. That. Well, no, he didn't. He didn't like it that much. But for George, he would do anything. Any of us would. But he got hurt terribly on that thing. And, and George Marshall taught me to rope and ride on, on uh, what do you call them? Railroad ties. What do you call them? Down a railroad. Railroad yeah. ties. Yeah. And yeah. on a horse, going down and really roping him on, a, on a, one of those carts that you pump on a railroad. It yeah. was... Unbelievable that I did it, but he taught me and I got him. I almost killed him. <clears throat> then on a barrel, yeah. he fell over the barrels. He did everything that was, that was asked of him, but he wound up with a few sprained things that I think he still has. <laughs> You made facts of life now, but uh, you ended up in the hospital on that one, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, we loved making that. Oh, that was the most adorable movie. There's a picture. Thank you. I think that movie is, uh, is a classic. Why were you in the hospital on that one? I did a stupid thing. I was stepping into a boat, and the assistant manager, or what do you call it, assistant uh, director, offered his hand, and I ignored it like that, and took the little leap into the boat and fell five and a half feet straight down mm. on my eye, on oh. this side of my head. And we only had about three weeks to go on the picture. And, uh... Oh, that's It terrifying. was, yeah, it was, it was bad. And, uh, now, very 
What? Oh, no, I, 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 didn't, I didn't realize you hadn't finished. Excuse well, me. Well, I've finished. Okay. <laughs> Uh, no, all right, I haven't finished. Yeah, okay. I thought maybe you had something to say. No, I haven't. Of course not. It's just that Bob and I were so wrapped up in this picture, and I had to go to a hospital and be gone for a month. And that's all I wanted to tell you. He just... Yeah. Um, did, did they stop production? They on the had to. Can I cut in? For a whole month? You mind if I cut in? Of, no. Because we made this at Lucy's studio. You know, she owned uh, the what, general studio. That, that was the Desilu studio. And she owned it, and we, it wasn't, it wasn't, her, it was a United Artists picture, mm -hmm. and we were just renting that thing, and they had a big stockholders meeting of uh, Desi Lu, and Lucy went to it at noon, and all the stockholders came back to the set with their statements under their arms, <laughs> and watched us do this one scene where we're walking on the plane, and as we, the guy said, action, this little old gal pulled out a bell in the house, sounded like a concrete mixer, and went, <laughs> And the assistant director went over and almost broke her arm and said, Lady, you cannot take movies on this set of this scene. She said, I've got $10,000 in this company. I'm going to shoot whatever I like. <laughs> So many wonderful glowing. What about Critics' Choice? That was one you did together. Yep. Critics' Choice. Yep. yep. Want to talk about that? Nope. Yep. <laughs> what do we, why don't we tell them how we tried to sell it, though? Why don't we tell them how we tried to get out of it? <laughs> no, we, we didn't try to get out of it. We did well, it. Well, we went but, out on the road. We to did sell a it. we did a thing in New York trying to sell that picture. <laughs> you know, no matter how you try to sell a picture. If it's not there, you're not going to sell it. No. Because the people sell a picture, you know? That's right. I don't know how this, uh, this, uh, what is this? Star, Star Wars. Wars, which I thought mm -hmm. was a story of my life. <laughs> I don't know how that thing got started, but all of a sudden, they like it. Zingo. That's you know, right. and, and the word says you got to see it. and lining up at 8 o'clock in the morning. But, uh, anyway, we wanted to sell, and they talked, Lucy and I, and going back to New York and having a few openings. A few openings. <laughs> Eleven openings in one day, Dinah. In New York? Did you hear what I said? I did. Eleven. Eleven, in one... Eleven theaters They're we merciless. played in a bus trying to hustle this piece of film. <laughs> <laughs> and the audience would sit out there and say... <laughs> like a bunch Awful of people. drunken barbers. <laughs> That was our only flop, though. Let's yeah, forget it. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. We that's won't right. talk about that. All right, listen. And they I'll... finally got the money back on TV. Did yeah. they? I think yesterday it finally won. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to that, remember? Yeah. Listen, uh, this, this next lady uh, was one of your co-stars in Here, Here Comes a Girl. Uh -huh. She has a few interesting things to say. Uh, and she's been on a lot of your television She sure shows. has. Uh, she is uh, one of my favorite people in the whole world. Great. Please welcome one of my favorite singers to Rosemary Clooney. The many laddies from millionaires to caddies would be to capture me. But you had such persistence, you wore down my resistance. I fell, and it was swell. You're my big and brave and handsome Romeo. How I won you, I shall never, never know. It's not that you're attractive, but oh, my heart grew active when you came into view. Time. 
It's a pretty song, oh, too. Yeah. That's for you, my friend. Thank you, baby. We got a crush <clears> on you. you. Always have. Thank you. Would you like to talk about the plot of Here Come the Girl? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to talk about it? Oh, it's that kind of a yeah. Yeah. Oh, it really yeah. was. It was that was a page by page. That's one of our that's what one of our beauties. Really? One of the beauties. Better than critics' choice? Oh. I mean worse. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I think it uh, I think it but just about same, huh? Oh, I, I tell you, I think this wins it, hands down. <laughs> I really do. You think it's the, the winner? No, no the, the, uh, winner? the plot was yeah. that Bob was, um, you delivered coal. Do you remember that? <laughs> your, your father delivered coal, and you were... I was worried about the energy crisis in those days. <laughs> yes. That's a nice out, too, right there. That's good. <laughs> And I was a chorus girl, and he wanted to be in the show because you were in love with the star. Yeah, the doorman wrote that, didn't he? I think so. I think so. Because, and, and also, he kept changing the, the bartender plots. Bartender at Lucy's. Know, yeah, really. Went on and on. And, and nobody... we loved it. We loved yeah. it. We yes, had Tony Martin it. and uh, Arlene Dahl. Beautiful and, Arlene and Dahl. And a great Gorgeous. Bartender. The title is really Here kind of... Here come the girl. Here come... That's about as bad a title as um, I've... Yeah. No, you, know, you know how you always had... <laughs> Bing, Bing had a, Bing had a couple of doozies, you know, and I used to always, I forget the one, I used to lay on him whenever we get, hey, let me, tell me about that so-and-so, and he'd say, here come the girls. Oh, <laughs> did he really? Yeah. That oh, that's that great. Used to be the thing. That's great. What's your strongest memory, then? An elephant stepped on my foot. <laughs> it's pretty hard to forget. something you oh, remember, yeah. yeah. I was trying, I, as you're, you know, I, I loved you, but you didn't pay any attention to me until the last, I think it was the last scene. Then you said, well, you know, was a light a, went on. Well, it was such a lot of girls, I know, I know. It's a terrible choice to yeah. make, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. I know, You have to know. really get a number, you know. Uh, yes, <laughs> absolutely true. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we had a pygmy elephant that was in the show, and, <laughs> and I wrote a message on the back of one of his ears and got past Bob, who was taking the star's place, if you believe it. I love the yeah. script. Well, do you yeah. love it? Yeah. And, and then, um... He was taking the star's place. He wanted to be... The star. The star. No, you know what these were? Walking idiot cards. <laughs> they had, the waiters had them as they passed me. I right. was up on the stage doing the thing. And they had the idiot cards walking by, and they pinned one on an elephant's a bright piece of material. Sounds yes. One on, really a, on a chorus girl's yeah. backside, I believe. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. And, um... And, the, and so as I was I was going past him with the ear facing him, the elephant did a little jada da and stepped, stepped right, right on up. my my slippered foot. Yeah. Yes, You've it ever did hurt. Been a stepped bit. on by an elephant? Mm, yeah, no, but I've been uh, a camel spit in my eye in Morocco. Oh. <laughs> and it's camel. in the picture. You can see it on the late show. Anyway. Oh, a camel. A camel spit in my eye, and I said to Butler and me, "You're going to take that over?" I said, "No, that's it. That's no. it." Everybody oh. fell down. That is the worst. It's This is your star, uh, co-star in Pale Face, and it's logical follow-up, the son of Pale Face, and hers is a face you will not easily forget ever, Miss Jane Russell. Lips 
lipstick on him. Hello, girls. We've all got lipstick on him. Jane. Y'all got lipstick on him. Now, I think we're going to cover him. Dolores won't speak to him when he gets home. No, yeah. Oh, she'll speak to him sharply. You can be sure. Yeah, sharply. She's not home. She's not home. Oh, then it's okay. She's in the greenhouse in Dallas getting beautiful. Oh, that's where she is. Yeah. What was it like making, we've heard about, uh, what was it, Rosie, what was your big opus? And be careful. Here come the girls. Here yes. come the girls. Be yes, don't forget And that, Critics' right? Choice. Now let's get into Pale Face. Was that fun? Yeah, it was a ball. Oh, isn't that a relief? Aren't isn't you glad? <laughs> it really, it really I was. I thought she was going to talk. <laughs> no, it was a marvelous experience for me because I had only made two pictures before that and I'd had three directors on each picture. Three and Pale, Pale Face was the first picture that I only had one director, and the script never changed, and it was the same from beginning to end. And uh, Listen. we Listen. finished on schedule, We're all and talking we about had a ball. Thing. We just had I a ball. I forgot to tell her, we put, we put the jokes in before the picture. <laughs> yeah, this time they did that. I knew all the jokes before I got there. But you had three directors on the other pictures? What uh -huh. it, what in that haystack? You lost them in the haystack, didn't you? <laughs> well, the writer directed the haystack scene. Yeah. You like that? That was yeah, the director. I, I like that. We have a Ooh. picture of you that I'd like you to explain, or Bob can explain this there. <laughs> Oh, that's a great scene. Yeah. Well, he was obviously chicken, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> you had an Academy Award winning song from that, didn't you? Buttons and bows. Yeah, right, right. that's right. Uh -huh. Almost had a big record on that, too. Yeah, yeah. You know that that Buttons and Bows did more for that picture because that was on that hit parade for about 20 weeks before the picture was released. Yeah. Dinah's record. Dinah had the big record. And on. you had the one, Don't didn't you? Don't you remember? You tried to act like you forgot. <laughs> uh, what is you, what's your name again? <laughs> no, you did have that marvelous thing, and that did, that really pushed that picture right up there. It opened at the Paramount, New York, and that was it. I didn't then we did that. Son of Pale Fist, didn't it? Yeah. Was that fun, too? Oh, yeah, it was great. Great. Did you find nutty people? We had uh, Norman McLeod on uh, on the pale face, and Is Norman McLeod talks softer than you. You know, I know you don't talk loud for this kind of money, but <laughs> he, talks, he talks softer than you. And he'd say, "Now the next scene, Bob." I'd say, "Yes, noisy. Let me hear about it. What is it?" <laughs> and he'd say, "Well, the next scene, so and so." Ah! And we were up doing a big thing on this stagecoach, you know, on a finish. And, I, and it was about 5 o'clock, and they like to have you work till 5.30, you know, get a little extra footage. And I said, how do you feel? And she said, I don't feel too good. And they had a double stage at Paramount. Oh, a big thing going on. And I said, well, folks, I said, let's quit. That, that's it for today. And we started to walk out. And they told me the next day that Norman McLeod stood there after I got about 50 yards away and said, you come back here. <laughs> Tell that one. That's oh, how I, I was going to tell I love story. it. I love oh, it. Oh, he stamped his foot. He says, you come back here, Bob. <laughs> and he and was whole, something. The crew just fell apart, and we all went home. <laughs> you, you have a song, though, that could be appropriate for the reunion with Bob. Yeah, everybody thinks that I did uh, Buttons and Bows in the picture, but I didn't. You sang it at the... I sang it, sang it at the Academy Award. Right. But I have a song that I think would be appropriate right now. Okay. Okay? You want okay, to John, John? with you? Maybe. You gonna do it with me? I don't know. I don't know. Do I? Seems like old times. <laughs> Having you to walk with. <laughs> Having you to talk with. And it's still a thrill just to have my arms around you still the thrill that it was the day i found you in that haystack seems like old time <laughs> like dinner date and flowers just like old <laughs> staying out for hours i always had to sing soprano with her <laughs> come true doing things we used to do seems like old time time Deal being here with, with you oh, baby. Uh, Bob, 
Bob, uh, you and Bing used to fight over who got the girl. We never fought. He was didn't, much never... older, and I thought it was his last chance. <laughs> last time I it. Really? Oh. I was very sweet about that. I think. Yeah, that is nice yeah. of you. Well, in this particular... Except you remember in Utopia, the finish, where I got the girl, and he came to visit us and looked in the crib at the baby, and it looked like oh, him? Yes. <laughs> nobody ever thought we'd get away with that, you oh, know? That was Buddy so DeSilva's joke, and nobody ever thought we'd get away oh, with that. that's that funny. Early porno. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Oh, well, he, he'd beat you to one of the leading ladies, one of you, and she did Connecticut <coughs> yeah, right. and King Arthur's Court, and then co-starred with you in The Great Lover, right. Rhonda Fleming. Rhonda Fleming. Yeah. Yeah. Today for the world, haven't we? We sure do. <laughs> We're all in chiffon. How about, pardon my back. Good evening. Get to the studio yeah. early, you get the best chair. You don't have to. Oh, is this have the best chair? So do you, well, isn't he gorgeous? Oh, yeah. End of the totem pole, oh, someone else is coming to us. Do you remember the first time you met Bob? I certainly do, yes. Uh, I had been working in a Connecticut Yankee with Bing Crosby, and uh, because Bing had, had used me and put my name up over the title with his, because he never liked to star alone, Bing Crosby and Rhonda Fleming in, in uh, Connecticut Yankee, which was my first big break and big thrill. So, of course, Bob had to use me, you see. That was just all there was to it. So, sight unseen. I mean, I didn't see him. I guess he had seen me somewhere. I met him, I think, the first day of the, on the set I think of so. The Great Lover. Yeah, I don't think you rehearsed or anything for that. <laughs> I think so. I think I don't think we. Uh, we had never met before you came into rehearsal. We just, mm -hmm. the great lover, just there we were in each other's arms, and it was something. I'll tell yeah. you. Well, well, it was interesting too, Diana. What was, it, what was it like? You gonna describe it? Everybody else. <laughs> yeah. well, well, it was nice to stop there. <laughs> because. Um, See, Bing was very easygoing, and he just didn't care a hoot about rehearsing, which was very tough on me because I hadn't had any experience. I had planned to be a singer and a, a dancer. And you made a picture with Bing. You know. And here I am with Bing, who now, while we're sitting here getting ready to do a scene, he, he's telling jokes. And, of course, it just blows my mind because I can't remember my, my line when they say action. Uh, so I had to learn to work that way. Now, when I started with Bob, I thought, well, here we're going to go again, you know, very, very funny, wonderful comedian who's dead serious. He is so serious. This oh, is serious really? business. He really wanted to rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse I it. I wonder why. Uh, and... <laughs> careful with my love stuff. <laughs> These aren't my own lips. These are Max Factor loners. <laughs> well, did all that rehearsal make you nervous or turn you on or what? How did you react? Well, uh, of course, I liked it because I hadn't had any experience, as I said. I hadn't been to New York and pounded the pavement. And, and so I needed that rehearsal. And Bob was wonderful. He would, <laughs> he would, uh, he would work with me and give me suggestions. Far into the like, night. Yeah. <laughs> You don't believe any of this stuff, do you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, yeah. well, tell we, her the great. Tell, tell Dinah the great story, because this is a lot of con. You, you know that uh, <laughs> the great story about this was Troy Post. Remember Troy Post Obviously, on the set? None of us Troy Post. No. He was the yes, the sound man. I'm sorry. I just remembered. It. I just remembered. No, he wasn't. He was wasn't the, Troy. He was the guy that checked your lips when you did a song. That's it. This oh, is the guy on the set. That's right. He used, to, he used to sit in front of the camera when you did a song and make sure that you moved your lips with a pre-recording. You know. If you said, I love her, you have to say, I love you and everything. And that's the way we did a song together. We did? We did a song together. What, what was it? Was that Thousand Violins? Something like that. They anyway, say... we sang, we sang it like this. We yeah. love you 
<laughs> what about Bob? We have to go back and redo it. Oh, that Redo was... it because we were overdoing the lips, you know? It was a hangover from the other scenes. <laughs> the girl that that in the middle of our love scenes they first off they put up as we know you know Janie and I put that rose down your cleavage you see and uh, then as you start to kiss there's the girl with a stopwatch and she's checking to be sure your lips are right together and you can only kiss for a few seconds now he's we're making a picture called the great lover that's some hot scene yeah. right <laughs> how would you sum up Bob's sex appeal well how think, do you think Rhonda <laughs> Just try to remember. <laughs> How do you think you got the name? <laughs> I'd like my money. I want to get the hell out of here. <laughs> try to remember, you nasty girl. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. No, I meant, I meant all those Try rehearsals. to remember. <laughs> all those rehearsals. I love that. You're try as nasty as that redhead no. next to you. <laughs> Try to, try to remember. It's, but the picture, the picture wasn't yesterday. And they oh, had I a see lot what you mean. You mean you mean in that picture? Thank God. <laughs> oh, I no. thought you, I thought you'd heard something. No. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. I never hear anything. I, just, I thought you'd heard. Uh, I, what was the question again? Oh. <laughs> How would you sum up Bob's sex appeal? I, I don't think anything can top what's that. <laughs> How, How did he get the name Rapid Robert? <laughs> to send out my circular letters again. You, all I can say, though, is... Rapid that is, Robert. <laughs> you can explain that. As a one. lover, Bob really tickled me. <laughs> well, he, Can't we get away from all this? <laughs> he, made, oh, he tickled my, you. Yeah, right, he He's did. Funny. And the reason... Keep this up, Anita Bryan will be my enemy. <laughs> We have just been joined by uh, a, a lady uh, who's very important in Bob Hope's life, and I'm sure that if there are any facts we have left uncovered, she can uh, assist us in, in this. In this <laughs> who is it? Who is it? Well, it's a most exciting lady, and I think perhaps what she can do, uh, what will be really exciting, is that uh, she can fill us in on the on the real Bob Hope and contribute to the lawsuit. He's probably <laughs> saying, Miss <laughs> Dorothy Lamour. Yeah. Yeah. this little saga we have been spinning well today. just go right ahead Dinah the only thing is you said I could fill everybody in mm -hmm. on things that the other girls didn't say to Bob but I'm afraid that we couldn't be on the air if I told those kind of things <laughs> <laughs> but you'll have to excuse me all of you in lovely chiffons and everything else and I ran over here because Bob keeps me working all the time <laughs> I just finished cleaning out his pool and I came oh. over and I <laughs> She used to be there. Uh, she, she said she used well, to be No, I, she lived next door to me for yeah, a long while. Neighbors. I, I but know. she finally moved away. She got tired. The applause machine was too loud. <laughs> no, I had to leave the neighbor. I had to leave the neighborhood because remember, you know, my husband and I would go to bed at a reasonable hour at night and the doorbell would ring at one o'clock in the morning and there was Bob with about five or ten of the press and everything else and I would come out with my hair like this and grease all over my face and everything else. And he'd knock and he'd say, and I'd open the little peak hole and I'd say, who is it? And uh, he'd say, don't you recognize the nose? 
So, anyway, I just decided I had to get out of the neighborhood to get some rest. And there went the neighborhood. <laughs> there, there, no, there went the neighborhood is when I moved in. Oh, I the neighborhood. Because Bob was driving along with one of his uh, staff one day, and, and they said to him, uh, Dottie and Bill just bought that house. And Bob says, oh, oh, there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> you want to tell about the experience? But you, you've helped it. You know the mailman's wearing a sarong now? <laughs> I thought you had to clean the pool in the sarong. I didn't. <laughs> did you wear a sarong for the first movie with uh, Crosby and Hope? Sure, no. Hope sure, and Crosby. Sure, no, you see, did. everybody is under a kind of a wrong impression about that. I did South Sea Island pictures uh, before I did the road pictures. If you asked her for a date, she'd climb a tree and get you one. <laughs> <laughs> Did Hope and Crosby uh, break you up when you work with them? They had to be funny working together. Well, now that the road pictures are all over with and everything, I can say something that I used to say very quietly, <laughs> that I should pay to work in a road picture. It was so much fun. That's what we felt about it. I used to... <laughs> The, I used to call myself the highest paid straight woman in the business, and I was. <laughs> were they, fun, they were nice on the set. Always the same, though. The two of them together. When what we do you mean the set? always the same, Dinah? No, always different? Oh. Well, every minute was different. I'll never forget, and I think Bob will take the words right out of my mouth when I start to tell this story about the first road picture. I had learned all of my lines and my script and I was ready to, to know everything that day when the camera rolled. Look at him laughing, I know. And I was in the middle, as usual. And uh, all of a sudden they turned the cameras and nothing like was in the script, <laughs> nothing at all. Bing in this ear, Bob in this ear, and it just went on and on and on. And finally, what did I say, Bob? <laughs> What did I say? I don't think it's printable. <laughs> Go. Uh, I don't know. What'd you say? Oh, you always tell this story. What would I say? You said that I said, when can I get my line in? And what did I say? I don't know. I said, twirl your sarong. We'll get back to you. <laughs> That's true. She'd say, when do I tell a joke? <laughs> But you know the wonderful thing about that, Dorothy, is you always used to play the South Sea Island maiden. And so you, if you said, me, South Sea Island maiden, that, you, you, I mean, you'd get a laugh with that right away with those two, wouldn't and, you? And John Hall would show up. <laughs> they didn't give me a chance to save me. And only Ray Milland and a few of the other ones gave me a chance to do that in the South Sea Island pictures. How did you get in the first road picture? I don't remember. All I know is that I, I ended up Why with Why don't you tell the truth, you audition? I will tell the truth. I will tell, tell, her, tell the truth. Tell them about, about something that tickled you. <laughs> That's Bob. awful. I did an awful audition. Program. This will never be on the air, folks. Oh, you see? Never got to finish. Never let, oh. nobody, he <laughs> does, never gives you a chance to finish. Oh, all right. You, you, Dinah, you're, you're the lady of my, all right. All right. Did, did you audition for the, is it true? No. You auditioned. No, she was, she was very large. Very, you already a big star? I saw her. Bob. I was in a show on Brooks. Can I get, can I get on? My name's, my you name's, always on, are. my name's on the thing. <laughs> I saw, I was down in Greenwich Village uh, at a speakeasy, and I walked by one Not fifth... Not a speakeasy. One Fifth Avenue. I was at a speakeasy, and oh. I walked by One Fifth Avenue, <laughs> and I heard this voice. And I looked in, and this gorgeous thing was laying against a glass pole singing a song. Yeah. Dorothy, most beautiful thing. And the next thing, you went up to uh, the Navarre Hotel. Oh, I forgot And the I next thing, I knew that. you were in Hollywood. Yeah. That's next right. Thing you got... I was here ahead of you. You just you kept sure following were. her around. Yeah, around. Well, sure. not only that, but he, he is still not saying the story he usually tells, that when I was leaning against the pole uh, singing, that he used to throw pennies at me. <laughs> I've seen that. I tell you, Rhonda it has a, hasn't finished her story. If I, if Don't let her on again. No, 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 no. A finish for her story. She said Come it's on. not fair because you well, tickled her why tickled during the love. That's right. why he tickled me. Excuse That's me. Right. I didn't oh. know that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, I just oh. didn't want to leave. I know. <laughs>
advice. I think you Go should. Ahead. But in a great lover, he, no, you he decided, it. oh, I should leave it. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. All right, then you can tell what it was uh, like working with Bob all these years. <laughs> Go ahead. What was it like Liz? working? What the hell was that? The audience walking Lucy? out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what Archie got a hold of. Can't you stop? Are the mice that big here? <laughs> Can't you stop them from dancing? What's going on? I think, think it's, it's, the, I think it's the Doobie Brothers rehearsing. What is it? Remember all the old stars that came in at the end? Tim Conway special? <laughs> Very well, they got a treadmill? Yeah. That's so funny. The walls are that thin. You don't huh? want to talk about, it's right, small studio. You don't want to talk about working with Bob Hope? Um... <laughs> well, you see what you did. I certainly. I just said you couldn't top what you'd already I just said. Leave it alone. Just leave it alone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just uh, hate to negate anything that Rhonda said mm -hmm. because uh, my experience with Bob has not been that he was over anxious to rehearse. Oh really? Oh. Right. Now oh. we got the connotation oh. from Rhonda. We know exactly what went on there and why. No, you uh, don't. There's the evidence. <laughs> That's right, ladies. There's yeah. nothing you can do about it. That's right. But, but with, uh, with me... Of, what kind of jury is this? Yeah. <laughs> with me, I had trouble always getting him, getting him to rehearse. Right. And I mean oh, for... No way. Yes. No he just way. Wanted Bob Hope, so no help way. me. No way. No way. Bob, I even did USO shows where you wouldn't rehearse with me. <laughs> That's right. Lucy, I couldn't agree more. This is really but exciting, exciting. Diana. <laughs> there's going to be a fight here in the no. Never on some of the road pictures, what used to happen, they didn't like to do production stills after, that I swear to you, there's a picture out of the three of us on some kind of a mule or something, and they had to, to put in somebody else's bodies and our heads because they wouldn't do production stills. Am I right, Lucy? They didn't want to work. Absolutely. I never did that? No. No, oh, you oh, mean... Oh, I'll show you You mean picture. bingo, not me. Oh, you oh, come on. I was a, he was a, he was a hard the worker. and pride he, he, of the he, studio. I, of course you would, honey. I never would. You know, I hate to rehearse. I don't want to be stale. Well, that's I'm all. glad that you finally had <laughs> <admitted. laughs> to rehearse. Thank God we got around to this. No, that wasn't good. You were doing a I'm kiss. I'm glad we got away from sex. I was losing. <laughs> Time I scared him to death, though. Oh, yeah, oh, really? you gotta hear this story. This is true. Now, you won't believe this. This is true. We were working the Paramount in New York, and we were doing, a, what, eight, nine shows a day? Seven, so? seven shows over the week. Seven? Weekend. Yeah. It was nine on the Outlaw. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and he would stay at the Waldorf, which was very grand, you see, but I had to get my sleep. So I would stay in some old flop house right across from the stage entrance. You mean you don't think they sleep at the Waldorf? <laughs> time, baby, to get in a taxi and I try see. to come across right. town. So what I do is I would get up and throw a fur coat over my old flannel nightgown, oh, so and I would time. roar out the door Shoot. and into the stage door. And then I would get into the zipper, you know, the sequin thing. And then I'd finally eventually get back to the When did you make up coming across the so. street? <laughs> Into the zip, Honey, the lips and lashes, thing. that's all I yeah, was right, worried lips about. And lashes. So one day I overslept. <laughs> one day I overslept. And uh, I got in the stage door and I could hear him announcing me on stage. Oh. And Les Brown and the boys are all Threw there. Threw the coat off and she didn't have anything and on. I <laughs> And we broke the house record. I came in the wings and I threw my coat open and here's this long flannel nightgown and I said, I'll be right with you, sweetheart. And I went tearing in and he talked for a little, told a couple more jokes and then oh. I came roaring out in the sequel oh, dress. That, that could have God. happened any time at the Paramount oh. because those shows would start at 10 o'clock in the morning. I never figured her was for a flannel nightgown. <laughs> I, don't know, I, didn't, I, I didn't have that picture of her. No. Uh, Phyllis Diller, yes, but Jim. <laughs> I know, and in go the earplugs, too, believe me. Oh, yeah. No, I oh, you know, not, she does I, on a plane. We went, we went east on a, on, to do a couple of shows. Uh, uh, you know what she does? She gets on the plane, and she gets a coat. She lays down on the floor of the plane and sleeps. That's pretty good, isn't it? I had my head under your seat. People walk all over, going to restaurants. 
Oh. Crawls and under the seat. <laughs> good. Pretty good deal. Yeah. They'll get sleeper Remember sooner or later. Time? That'll teach them. I have, I have to have my sleep. I have to have my sleep. Huh? The time in Chicago at the Shade Parade. Oh. And Is that good? May That's I tell book. this, Dinah? Of course. Well, we were both in Chicago, and it, we didn't know if he, I didn't know he was there. He didn't know I was there. And we went to the old Shea Paris, and I think, I think Jimmy Durante. You were Durani, with Greg Botzer and I walked in. Oh, all right. Name dropper. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Bob came over to our table, and some lady from way across the room walked over. And may I do this to you? Yes, No, I'll do it to him. Minute. All right. The woman came over, and she said, did like this and that. And she said, Julia, this is it. <laughs> I'm here with Dorothy yeah. Lamour and Jane Russell <laughs> and Rhonda Fleming and Rosemary Clooney and Lucio Ball and our idol, Bob Hope. <clears throat> and all our, his broads. That's right. <laughs> our hero. You feel that you know all of these girls pretty well? I sure do, and I adore them all. I know. They're well, all I have a, a number of marvelous. questions that we asked. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. You do know about that? I know. It's got well, to be something you've shown everybody else a lyric, so it's got to be. <laughs> no, another. it's not a lyric. And they're going to spear me <laughs> once a, again. Oh, no. I hate. I, no, I have a, a simple comment. I hate here. to no, join no. a ripoff like this at this money. <laughs> <laughs> Getting money, if I mean, don't you? The, we could donate this to a good charity. All right. Me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> me. That's right. I, I would, or me, it doesn't. No, this, no, these are compliments, and I just want you to pick sure. out which one of the girls Shirley here Dinah. said this about you. Surely, okay? Dinah. As a dancer, one of these girls <laughs> described you as hardworking. Who do you think said that? Um, as a dancer. As a dancer. One of these girls described Who'd I dance with? Everybody. Wait a minute. This outfit? Gotta be Lucy. No. No. Who else did I dance with? I don't know. As a dancer, I'm a hard worker. As a dancer, you are a hard worker. One of these gals? One of these girls said Hurry up, Bob. <laughs> I'm a loss to say that. I don't. Rosie said that. You see, you don't even remember. Here come the girls. We danced in I that picture <laughs> on a ferry boat, which was also waiting in the wings with the elephant. Don't let Anita Bryant hear that. <laughs> We did a routine. Yes, we did. Dance routine? Yes, we did. What, a tap or something? Yeah, right. She said you were a hard worker. That's a hard to take. Lay out. Lay out a second. Hey, we did a dance. Put your nose in that. Don't you remember? No. The reason that you were hard working, yes, the reason, I don't blame him. I can't. There was a, no, the thing is that you were doing a strip radio show, a television show, personal appearances, and a picture when you could Make it, you know? Yeah. So when you got there, then you'd have to learn the dance routine really quick. And I remember. Said, well, I you remember. really worked hard to do it. Thank you God, did. so we can get on with the show. <laughs> now, Lucy. <laughs> now, I have another, one of the other uh, ladies here said that uh, he knows three steps, and he's used them for 30 years. It's alive. Five steps. Five <laughs> steps and use them for... Five steps. You, would you like to venture in a guess as to who said that? Yes. Dancing, you mean, right? Don't look at me. Yeah. <laughs> that is Lucy. That's right. <laughs> you know something? You know how funny that is? Because you know that I taught dancing in Cleveland? Did you? Yes, I, I did. I thought you were a boxer. Packy no, East. Packy East. That's how, I that's how I became a dance writer. <laughs> I was hit one night. I fell right into dancing. <laughs> No, but I, I did. I, I taught dancing on, on Euclid and, and yeah. 63rd Street and John Root's uh, Dancing Academy. Yeah. I taught tap dancing. Yeah. Well, I thought a... you taught wrestling after The Great Lover. <laughs> which which leads me to my next question. Isn't it, Maisie? I'll never tickle you again. <laughs> oh, 
were just thinking about it. Well, <laughs> this leads us to sex appeal, right? The most sex appeal of any male star in pictures. Who said that? My agent. <laughs> One of us group here. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't think of yourself as having sex appeal? Yeah, I know. I know I do. Every time I shave. <laughs> I'm convinced of it. I D think I'll leave now. Dottie Lamour said that. Dottie said that. Yes. I think I'll leave now. Well, at the well, time, I these was girls, wondering. These girls have had their share. <laughs> and he never tickled me. Yeah. No. But, you know, I was working at the time with, with stars like Tyrone Power and, um, I don't know, Ray Moland and I don't know how many other. But I don't know, in my younger days. Um, what did you know? <laughs> probably why I made this statement, because I didn't know. <laughs> I have one other interesting commentary here, but we were talking about Bob Hope as a kisser. And I have one here <laughs> that says wet. Uh, oh, oh, look at me. Oh, wet oh, kisser. goodness. Wet gracious. Now, who so would that right. be? I think it is. Huh? Good Was he a good kisser? kisser? Oh, yes. Very really good, good kisser. kisser. Well, guess, Bob. Guess, Bob. Who do you think? Keep the game going, please. Any one of them could have said it. <laughs> <laughs> it was Jane Russell. Jane Russell. Jane Russell. Wet kisser? No, I feel just the opposite. Did I agree with that to you? Sweet. Yes, sweetheart. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to send you a check. <laughs> I didn't realize. Diana. I'm very sorry. Can I tell you one funny story about a kissing scene we had one time in my favorite brunette? Well, Bob and I, and I don't know whether Bing did it or not, we'd chew gum, you know, and then right, oh, yeah. right before, put the gum under our tongue and the cameras would go on, we'd do it like this. So we had a love scene one day and I put bubble gum under my tongue and I had it all done just right. And just as we're in this love scene, the cameras are rolling, the bubble came out that way, went right on his nose and it busted. <laughs> <laughs> no punchline, no punchline. And line. you think I'm not a hell of an actor. The stuff I have to do. <laughs> Trials and That's true. This is what I had to go uh, through. Listen, I'm gonna try to make a dollar. I'm going to try to sing a song that was associated with you. I didn't realize till you said it today that this song was in one of your Broadway shows. Oh, I'd have planned it earlier, and perhaps if I uh, do goof up the lyric, you'll understand it's because I haven't <laughs> sung it in an hour and a half. This is called I Can't oh, Get I Started With You. I do too. Vernon Duke. Yes. I've flown around the world in a plane. I've settled revolutions in Spain The North Pole I've charted Still I can't get started with you Here comes a lot Around the golf course I'm under par And Ingmar Bergman asked me to start I've got a house a show place still I can't get no place with you you're so supreme lyrics I write of you scheme just for the sight of you dream both day and night of you but what good does it do I've been consulted by Jimmy C and Robert Redford asked me to tea oh. <laughs> With queens I've a la carte, but I can't get started with you.
Our Lady with the uh, wash and wear sarong. What do you, you want to say what you said about Dorothy in the book? Can you remember some of the lovely what things? What did he say? I oh. don't know. I just I'll said she you. was a... Uh, <laughs> they good. These are all my dogs. I love I all these people, you know? And I don't care. You know, if they want to pick on Dad, I don't care. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy, how many their phone. Uh, actually, how many pictures did you wear sarong in? Six out of about 55 pictures. And that's all, and that's what everybody remembers. I think all. How many? That's six. I know I stole the safety pin in two. <laughs> Did you go I can't location? get out of a haystack. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it, she got in. That's funny. <laughs> Did you uh, ever go on location for any of those road pictures with Bob? Well, I don't know about the road pictures, but I remember... We were on location one time. One of the pictures I did with Bob, because I did other pictures besides the road pictures with Bob. I'm not doing a Bob Hope on you. Pardon me, Jane. It's all right, girl. But <laughs> anyway, we were on location. I think it was out near Santa Anita. And Bob had just come to California. And we were sitting out having a box lunch one day. And everybody, these, the workmen on the set and the makeup man and everything, they started trying to, you know, be the comedian topping Bob. And Bob turned around to one of them and he said, if you're not careful, I'll hit you over the head with one of my annuities. <laughs> oh. That was a clever line. That was when you first. <laughs> well, can you help it? You were a beginner then. You just came out here. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Those of you who'd like to read it and find out what wasn't said yeah, about Bob Hope, yeah, you don't believe any of this. The truth is in here. Oh. <laughs> I don't know about you. There's more great entertainment on Dinah next week when her guests will include Engelbert Humperdinck, Lola Falana, Lawrence Welk, Carrie Snodgrass, Charlie Pride, Glenn Ford, and many others. All right here on 11 Alive.